from the gospel according to St. Luke. And by the grace of God next week, you'll hear the same parable again according to St. Matthew. And it's uh, one of the few parables that is recorded has in, in several gospels. One of the parables that our Lord Jesus Christ himself explained. Um, the reason why they repeat or the reason why the church puts emphasis on this because naturally, um, you know, in Egypt, this is the season to cultivate and to sow in the seeds. So as the the seeds are being sown on the ground, people think about this parable. The parable is very important for us. Of course, the, the great and the master sower, the perfect sower is God himself. And the seed is the word of God. And the soil, the different kinds of soil are different people. And yes, there are different kind of people, but yet everybody can change. These soils can change and can be reclaimed. But uh, today I want to contemplate on something uh, along the same lines, but a little bit different. What about us as sowers? What about us as sowers? We have, and the Bible talks about us humans as sowers as well. How can we learn from this parable and how can we sow ourselves? St. Paul in Galatians 6, 7 says, whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So whatever you sow, you will reap. There is a strong and direct correlation between what you sow and what you reap. And the harvest depends on the kind of... Uh, fruit you have or the kind of product at the end. In any country, no matter how many resources are there, nothing is more important than um, growing food and sustaining the population. So the, the sower, the farmer, toils all year round to make sure that the harvest is plenty. What about spiritual sowing and spiritual harvesting. The first question I want to ask, why, why do we need to be partners in the spiritual sowing? Since God is the great and master sower, the perfect one, what is my role and what's your role? What's everybody's role here? God, out of his love for us, he lets us work in his vineyard. God is inviting us and calling each and every one of us, no exceptions, to come and work in his vineyard and be partners. Um, remember this parable, the guy that, uh, that uh, had the, um, this vineyard and uh, he began to call people the ninth hour of the day, at uh, the third hour of the day, then at the sixth hour of the day, the ninth hour of the day, even at the eleventh hour when there's only one hour left, he's still calling people, come and work for me, come and work, come and get the blessing. So this is truly a calling for all of us to, um, to work with God. Not that God needs his, you know, we say in the liturgy, Gregorian liturgy, you do not need my servant. I am the one who needs of your lordship. If anybody is tempted, you know what, I can't, uh, I, you know, um, I'm not going to serve anymore or, or something like this. And you think that, you know, no, it's, I am the person who needs a service. The service will provide for itself. God will provide labors for the harvest. It's I am the one who need that blessing. I am the one who need to work with God. But God has many angels without number, but God gives us a chance to work with Him. This is an essential component or essential element in our life with Christ. Without this, we'll lose the goal in our life, which is eternal life. Sin tries to steer us away from God. As St. Paul says, just as, just as that, that through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, thus death spread to all men. Satan put in a seed of uh, envy and see a seed of sin in the, in the life of in humanity and spread throughout 
throughout all humanity. Through, of course, through Adam and Eve. This is an, an epistle of uh, the, his epistle to Romans, chapter 5. And we fell from eternal life and became, there was a middle wall. But St. Paul continues that, for it is by the one man offense uh, and death reigned through the one, much more those who received abundance of grace of the gift of righteousness will reign, will reign in if through the one Jesus Christ. Through the one Jesus Christ now came back. As we fell in sin, our Lord returned us back. He gave us this abundance of grace. He, so He gave us what we need and more so you can share with others. It's very important to realize that God gave you much, much more than what you need so you can share with others. You can sow in the lives of others. So we can be partners with Him in sowing the Word. He commanded us to sow with Him. And in, in obedience, we work with Him. For example, when our Lord washed the feet of the disciples, He said, I'm, I'm your master, wash your feet, and you do also likewise. You do the same thing. So He's giving us a direct command to whatever He did to, 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 to the best of our capacity and capability, we also ought to do. And He said in His uh, farewell speech in, in uh, Upper Room Discourse, As I loved you, you love one another. As I loved you, you love one another. So he's giving us a pattern to follow. A pattern to follow. So that they will know you are my disciple if you love one another. <coughs> and you have experienced and you have touched and you have lived. You realize how much God loves you. And he did not love by words. He did not just give empty promises. He loved by action. Um, and you saw how, how deep was his love. He, he sowed without ceasing. And he wants us to do likewise. So it's a calling, it's a blessing, it's obedience for us to sow in with him. So the first one, I, we, we, we address the question why we need to sow. Because like I said, it's a calling, it's, it's a blessing, and it is for, uh, out of obedience. So the second thing, now the second question, what do we sow? What can I you know, what can we, weak humans, you know, sow? And this is the question that needs a an answer. We found many answers in the Bible. In the book of Job, chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Even as I have seen those who plow in iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. So those who sow, in, who sow trouble reap the same. That's why we need to... The first thing before you sow, you have to take the sin out of my life. I have to pull the sin and not just when you want to take a weed out of your front yard or your back. You don't just cut the part you see. What do you do to get out the weed? You have to go to the root of it. You have to either take it out of the root if you can. There is a certain chemical you spread so you can kill the root of that weed so it doesn't grow anymore. Sometimes kid, we just trim the sin. I want to trim the visible part of the sin, and leave, but we leave the root in, in. You have to take it out and hit it uh, in uh, in the core at the root. You have to take all these weeds with the plow of repentance. Even if even if sin is as heavy as these rocks, the rocky soil, or if it's uh, or spread out like the thorns, you have to take it out. You, the sower has to prepare the land before you put on the seeds and begin to um, uh, continue. I cannot be silent with sin in my life. I cannot, I cannot get, I have sin and, could, and turn a blind eye towards sin in my life because the wages of sin is what? Huh? What's the wage of sin is? Death. The wage of sin is death um, and be far away from God. I need to take away sin from my life I also need to, because if I, if I have sin in my life and keep sowing, I probably I'll spread. Sin is contagious. So one of the things that are contagious. I can begin to sow in the seeds of sin in other people's life as well. Um, St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 8, 9, Be, Beware lest somehow this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to those who are weak. Sometimes I may use liberty 
and not in a wise way, and this I could turn into a stumbling block into other persons as well. That's why I, I need to ask myself, if I, if, I, if I commit this action, or if I speak this way, if I um, appear in a certain way, will this so in a stumbling block, so in other person a stumbling block or not? Will this cause some other, somebody to stumble or not? Some people also uh, so in division and, and problems between others. In the book of Proverbs chapter 6 verse uh, I think 16 or 19 says, A false witness who, sp who speaks lies. And he says there, there are several things that God does not approve or does not, that God despises. Among them, a false witness who, spread, who speaks lies, a false witness God despises, a false witness who speaks lies. No wonder why lying is not good. And one who sows discord among brethren. This is also very despised in the eyes of God. When somebody sows in um, discord, discord means he begins to pit somebody against somebody until this person they said this about you and begin to create enmities. God does not like this at all. No matter what's your justification, no matter how your logic is, sowing discord among others, uh, and the, the, the Christ is very clear. He said, blessed are the peacemakers, those who make peace, do not, who do not sow discord. Do we sow in discord and hatred, or if there's something like that, I need to take it out of my heart. I, how can I come forth and proceed to receive the Holy Communion, the Holy Sacraments. When, if there is, um, if there is discord um, with my, you know, with one of my friends or one of my loved ones, the our Lord in the Sermon Mount was very clear. He said, if you want to come and offer, to present an offering, and come and worship, and remember, there's something against your brother. Go first and fix it, then come back so that it whatever you're presenting is going to be acceptable, whatever service you'll be making is acceptable. If you ever catch yourself saying, I can, I can never forgive this person, and I know I have a problem. There's a problem if you cannot forgive someone. This is something that, if you, uh, simply put, simply put, and there's no uh, uh, work around it. If I cannot forgive, God will not forgive me. If I cannot forgive others, God will not forgive me. If God will not forgive me, then I'm sure you can... Uh, what's, what's the consequence of that? Not forgiven. So, so in, I have to prepare myself. I have to take out the sin. I have to not to sow discord, take out the discord, take out the enmity, take out all of this and be reconciled so I can move on to the next step. So we realize that now I have to do something positive. I have to sow in something positive. And the, the Holy Scripture is filled with examples about things that we ought to sow in, we ought to spread around. Some of the things uh, are, are very important for us to spread around. And if we, if we spread these things around, we will reap 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. The first thing you have to sow is righteousness. The first thing we have to sow is in the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 18, it says, The wicked man does, not, does deceptive work, but he who sows righteousness will have, will have a great reward. He who sows in righteousness. Do we sow in, or a sure, sorry, a sure reward. Will have a sure reward. Those who sow righteousness will have a sure reward. Sometimes, for example, somebody may come to me, Abuna, I could not say the whole truth when, when I asked. Uh, when I was asked a question, I asked him why, and you know uh, how we are the children of Christ, and we are, we are we ought to hear the truth, we ought to witness to the truth, or witness the truth for the way and live by the truth. Sometimes we we th we look at the instant um, the instant result. You know, if I if I make the story look this way, this is what I'll get immediately. But we forget the end result. What happens at the end? How I cannot please somebody now on expense of my Father in heaven. You cannot. There's no justification for me to uh, to please somebody 
or to make them hear what they want to hear, at the end of time, I, I disappoint my Father in heaven. You have to sow in righteousness. Righteousness means what? The right thing, doing the right thing. Um, the book of Hosea chapter 10, verse, verse 12, it says, um, Sowing for yourself, so 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 for yourself righteousness reap in mer reap in mercy break your fallow ground see so in righteous we are have a, we have a clear command to sow in the righteousness to do the right thing um, uh, and witness to God by uh, uh, sowing in righteousness with our dealings with others the second thing we can sow we can sow in blessing and in St Paul says he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and who will sow in bountifully, plentifully, will reap in also bountifully as well. Sow in a blessing. God loves a cheerful giver. See, take a look back at the great things that God has done in your life over all these years. How, what, what He has given us. And remember, everything that you have is from God. Don't ever say, this is my effort. My sweat. This is my... Because, yes, it is your effort and your sweat and your intelligence and your talents that were God, that are God-given. So ultimately, God is the giver of everything. Even David said, All things come from you, and of your own, of your own, we given you. All things come from you. When, we, when I give God something, it's not that I, uh, you know, it's exactly like... Uh, like when you're invited to maybe to a function or birthday, and you, ha you have to you, you have to take a gift, so mom or dad would give you, you know, something. So you go give it to them as a gift from you. So it, it's it's from God. It's not it's not mine that I'm giving from 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 my. You know, it is what God has blessed me with. Remember this also. And um, when you sow in blessing, God will give you will re blessing as well. One of the fathers, he said something I cannot forget. He says, the little in the hands of God will be plenty. And the plenty away from the hands of God will be so little. And you, 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 can't, you, can't, you cannot miss this. Some people have millions and billions and they're not happy. All what they have means very little to them. And you see, they, feel they live very strange lifestyles. And, and they commit all sorts of weird things. Because the plenty away from God becomes so little, means so little. And somebody may have very little, very little, but to put it in the hand of God, will feel like, wow, they got the world. They got the world. Let's not judge Kedab by just by sheer numbers. See, see what, you know, what God can do with whatever you have if you sow in with blessing. We also need to sow in, sow in spiritual things. Spiritual things. Uh, St. Paul says in Galatians 6, 8, He who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. When you sow in spirituality, you will gain something much bigger. St. Paul says you can sow in you know, things of the flesh, you reap corruption. And then after all, the flesh is corruptible. So if you... Focus so much on the needs of the flesh and all the desires and so forth, what will end up with nothing? Zero. Zero. But if we sow in spiritual things, or if we sow in, um, uh, the, the, in the spiritual realm, we will reap everlasting life. If I live my life according to the flesh, I'll take, you know, fruits of the flesh. And what's the fruit of the flesh? The desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the desire of the of money, and so forth. All this is corruption. Uh, I know a story of somebody who, who loved his sports car so much that in the end he wanted to as well to be buried in his sports car. He was buried, and he fulfilled his. You know, he, he was buried. They buried it. They dug a bigger hole in the ground, cost even more, and they put it. In, and so he got his wish. But what what has he done? Couldn't this be, Carl, if it were sold, to, it can help so many other people? But this is the fruits of the flesh. How can we live according to the Spirit? We should have a strong relationship with God. This strong relationship with God should extend beyond the walls of the church or beyond the few minutes you spend with God in prayer 
or beyond the few minutes that you spend reading your Bible, or beyond the few, the few, you know, the few days that you fast, whatever. My relationship with God should be ever so evident in my life. I'm not talking about self-righteousness. I'm trying to, to put a false impression. Upon, I'm talking about being genuinely. A genuinely a spiritual person. Yes, I live in the world, but I'm not of the world. This is what God said. You are in the world, but you're not of the world. Do not think, you know, because I'm here, I'll just do whatever. Because I live here. Because I, you know, I just go with the flow. You are called. We are called to stand out. In the, in the beginning of the, your Matins prayer, the, the, the epistle that we, of St. Paul, after the introduction, we read, I beseech you as a prisoner to, to heed the call. There's a call. You're called to be different. You're called to be God's children. And this is what you need to sow in. People will see that you are a Christian. You are different. Certain things, certain words cannot come out of my mouth. Certain thoughts cannot just cross my head. Certain uh, things I can, or certain things I cannot watch. Or certain songs and lyrics I cannot listen to. There is no justification for it as a child of God. Oh, Abuna, but the song is so good, but it has just one bad word in it. One child, someone told me this. Remember, I told you this before. You know, if you have your favorite dish, whether you put one drop of poison or a whole bottle of poison, still you're not going to touch it. Doesn't matter. You're called, we're called to be different. Let this spread. Let this, you know, many of the saints, we just heard some saints who were martyred today. People saw them. They saw, you know, how spiritual they were, even to the point of martyrdom. People, because we believe in the God of these Christians. It was contagious. Why is it the other way around? We catch on things from people around us. Why we do not spread the good things that God has blessed you with? This is a challenge for all of us, all of us here, that we need to spread the good news. We need to, need to spread the great things that God has done in our life. And so we can reap the fruits of the Spirit. And he who walks according to Spirit, will reap the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, self-control, etc. We need to sow in together. We need to work with the great sower. I love this part in, in the litanies. We say, the oneness of love that is of heart may it take root in us. We want to have these, these, these deep roots, the root of oneness. Oneness means what? One, we're together. We're together with who? We're together with God. This is the whole point of communion, that we are united with Christ and we're united with one another so that we can get eternal life. Abuna says, this is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for remission of sin and eternal life for those who partake of Him. You say, Amen. I believe. When Abuna gives you communion, you say, I believe. This is, the, this is the blood of Christ given for Emmanuel of God, given for remission of sins, eternal life for those who partake of Him. I mean, I believe in this. And when we all work together with the great sower, we all get the share of the same rewards. He who reaps, receives wages, and gathers fruits for eternal life, that he who, he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. This is the ultimate goal, that we rejoice together. To God be the glory now and forever, unto the end of ages. Amen.